I love my Yaesu FT818. I'm surprised at how much I do. One problem though, it doesn't have a built-in sound card, so I can't do digital modes out in the field. That's where the DigiRig comes in. Today I'm going to show you how to get the DigiRig set up with the 817 or 818 so you can get on WSJTX and do all kinds of digital modes. My name is Mike K at MRD. This is Ham Radio Tube. And here it is. The DigiRig Mobile, tiny little guy. Look at how small that thing is. So you've got a serial and an audio port on one side and a USB-C on another. When you purchase it, you wanna make sure you get the cables specifically for the Yaesu. I think it says FT8XX, meaning it'll work with the 817, the 818. This will also work with the 891. We've got a couple different cords here. We've got one that's green, one that's black. And here we can see we have the green is the serial. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. And the black is the audio. Pretty foolproof. And then as we look at the back of the 818, here we can see the data cable, which is the black one, which has the six pin uh, DIN on there. Go ahead and plug that in to the radio. And then we can plug the, what is that, eight pin or so into the ACC. There we are, like that. And then we have this USB-C to USB-A, whatever that is, plug that in and then we can take the other side and plug it into our computer. Now let's hop on the desktop and see what is next. So now that we've got our DigiRig set up, there's a couple things we wanna do before we open up WSJTX. So first thing we wanna check our device manager and we need to find what COM port our DigiRig is on. So we can open up device manager, go down here to ports and here I can see the Silicon Labs UART bridge on COM11. If you're not sure which one it is, just unplug the DigiRig and this will kind of refresh like it's doing now and you'll see now something's missing so we can plug it back in and it'll do that refresh again and we can say okay well four three and six were just there now what's the new one com 11. now we can close the device manager now we want to open up our control panel and we're going to go to hardware and sound and we're going to go to manage audio devices now here under playback, we're, we're gonna, you're gonna see at least a couple icons. One will be speakers and one will be, it doesn't say DigiRig uh, initially, you can rename that, but we're looking for this USB PNP sound device. Now the first thing you wanna do is make that your default device. So uh, see mine's grayed out, meaning it is the default device, but if you need to change it, you just click it and hit uh, set default and you get that little green uh, arrow on there or check mark. And we want to right click this and go to properties. Here is where you can rename it DigiRig as I have. You can also change the icon. I think it shows up as a microphone. I just changed it to a modem. So that's where you can adjust that. Under levels, under speakers, I have mine set to 100, microphone zero. And there's really not anything else we need to do uh, under this particular page. But under this recording tab, Again, same thing. We're looking for the USB PNP sound device. Right click it, go to properties. Again, you can change it. Uh, and we also want to make sure we're using this device. Make sure that's enabled. Under the listen tab here, we want to make sure this listen to this device is unchecked. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but that's what we're looking for. Uh, under custom, we want to make sure AGC is unchecked. And under levels, the instructions say to, to start off at about 20 here. Uh, I find mine works pretty good at about 35. We'll get into this a little bit later, uh, but this is important. So uh, I'm gonna leave that uh, open for now. Go ahead and close this. That's all the settings we should need to do with the audio. Now we can go ahead and open up WSJTX and we're gonna wanna go to file settings under general if you're just using wsjtx the first time you want to put in your call sign make sure you put your grid square in here a couple things i like check display distance and miles uh transmit messages to our uh, rx frequency window and i like to show uh dxcc grid and work before status double click call sign call sign enables transmit disable transmit after 73 and calling cq uh, forces call first. That's about all you need in this page. Under radio, 
in this drop down, you're going to click that and scroll all the way down until you see FT, Yesu FT818 or 817, whichever you have. Uh, here is where we're going to set the COM port. Again, mine was at 11. The baud rate, my baud rate is set to 9600. I think that's what the uh, uh, radio comes set as uh, stock. Data bits, stop bits, handshake, I keep all that at default. PTT method is cat. Under mode, I have data packet and split operation is fake it. You can use rig as well if you want, but I like to use fake it. Uh, mode, data packet, this is gonna automatically put the radio into the data mode. So you shouldn't have to mess with anything. It should just automatically work. And then under audio, here we need to set for our input. We're gonna check that USB PNP sound device. That's the DigiRig. And then here under output, we also wanna select the DigiRig USB PNP sound device. That should be all we need to do. So we can go back to the general, or excuse me, the radio tab, and we can hit test cat. And you should see that that turns green. We can also hit test PTT. That turns red. That's a good thing, uh, oddly enough. Uh, so when test PTT is red, that means it's working as well. Now you should be able to hit OK. You can see we are decoding down here. If for some reason you don't see yourself, uh, you don't see any decoded signals in this top left window, uh, your, your time could be off. So these are all uh, the, the time shift. You may need to go down to the bottom right of the window on your time, right click that, uh, click adjust date and time, and then click sync now because WSJTX, this is very time sensitive. So if it's over about a second and a half, uh, two seconds, uh, it's not really gonna decode very well or, or at all. You might not see anything in here. So now we can see we've got this set for 20 meters. We can see we've got rig control. We're changing the radio's frequency just by using WSJTX and everything is working properly. Now, one thing on the radio we wanna check just to make sure it's working right. If you just hit the function and you can use the uh, selector knob down here, go to the NB AGC. Uh, you wanna make sure, I like my AGC on auto, that way when it goes into the digital mode, it just makes sure it's on fast. Otherwise you can just manually select it to be on fast, but uh, either auto or fast is what you wanna do for that and you'll have great results. Now let's go back to the recording settings of the DigiRig. We'll go back into properties and I just wanna show you how you wanna set this. So we wanna pay attention to this left portion here, this green uh, level bar. This is where you're gonna adjust the input level of the radio. So you can see if I crank this all the way up, this is red. That's bad, we're overloading the front end of the radio. And basically what's gonna happen is it's just not gonna see at the top of the waterfall here, all those signals went away. It's just overloading it, it's not decoding anything. So we wanna make sure we drop this down. Uh, the instructions say start at about 20. And you can see now this green arrow has gone down. Everything is green, everything is good. So like I said, I keep mine at uh, 35. I've had pretty good luck with it there. But play around with this. You definitely want to make sure you're not overloading your front end. So now that we've got everything working properly, all our levels are set, we're ready to test, make sure everything works. So we're just going to go ahead and hit this tune button. And it looks like everything's good. Our power is coming out. We want to adjust this power slider here, though. You don't want to crank it all the way up. You really want to bring it down until you start seeing that power just kind of start to flicker a little bit like that. Uh, what can happen if you just crank this all the way up, you'll actually be uh, kind of overloading it on, on the uh, finals there and you'll be, you'll be putting out a bit of splatter. So that's how you can check and make sure you're putting out a good signal. Just mind that uh, power slider. And if you, if you change bands, you wanna make sure you check that as well. But there is a fix for that when you change bands. Once you have all that set, when you change bands underneath this audio tab, you can remember your transmit and power settings by band. So I, I check the transmit and the tune buttons here. So what that means is, let's say I'm gonna tune this for the power for 17 meters. Let's bring this down a little bit. That's, that's good there. And then we just did it for 10 meters. We can go back to 10 meters and our power slider should be just fine there as well. Let's adjust that a tiny bit more and you can do that for all the bands. So you shouldn't have to really muck with it too much 
when uh, you go around and change bands there. So that is the master class on how to use the DigiRig with the 818. If these kind of videos are helpful to you, hit the like, share, and subscribe button, and uh, we'll see you again on another episode of Ham Radio Tube 73, guys.